Right, so today we're going to prophesy against Moab. Okay, so before we do that, let's get into the origins of Moab. Who is Moab? All right, who are them folks? Let's see. Go to Genesis 19. Right quick. Genesis chapter 19. Uh, let's jump verse. Let's go to verse 29 real quick. Genesis 19, 29. Let's deal with the origins of Moab. Moab is the so-called Chinese today. Watch this, read. The book of Genesis, chapter 19 and verse 29. Go ahead. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. Right. So the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Right. Go ahead. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. Mm -hmm. For he feared to dwell in Zor and he dwelt in a cave, he and his two daughters. Now, remember, his wife looked back. Right? And she became a pillar of salt because of it. Right? Go ahead. And the firstborn said unto the younger, mm -hmm. Our father is old, and there is not a man in the earth to come in unto us Read. after the manner of all the earth. So his daughters came up with a plan. They said, well, our father is old. We just saw fire and brimstone rain down upon uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So they figured there was no more man around for them to sleep with to bring forth children. Go ahead. Come, let us make our father drink wine, mm. and we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. Go ahead. And they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and perceived not, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. So she slept with her father. She got him drunk and had, and had sex with him. Go ahead. And it came to pass on the morrow that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesterday night with my father. Go ahead. Let us make him drink wine this night also, go ahead. and go thou in and lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. So they got him so drunk, they both had sex with him two different nights. They got him that drunk, all right? Now, if you're thinking this, somebody in their mind is trying to be clever and say, oh, God, allow incest. Well, that was how these two nations, this is the beginning of nations, all right? Lot's children had to be have descendants, all right? He only had daughters. Go ahead. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Mm. And the firstborn by a son and called his name Moab. So the firstborn name was Moab. Moab. Go ahead. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. So Lot is the father of the Moabites by his daughter. That's incest, obviously. We understand that today. But at this time, it's the beginning of nations. The Lord allowed it to bring forth this particular race into the earth. Go ahead. And the younger, she also bare a son and called his name Ben-Ami. Mm -hmm. The same is the father of the children of Ammon unto this day. So Ammon comes from Ben-Ami, okay? Ben-Ami. So you got Moab and you got Ammon. Now, I want you to go to Leviticus real quick because the Most High did write this in his law. Go to Leviticus 18 real fast. Uh, go to chapter 18, verse 7. The book of Leviticus 18 and verse 7. Bring the nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother thou shalt not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. So the Lord I had a law when we came out of Egypt to not lay with your father or lay with your mother. Like we said, they call called incest. And what it causes is it causes different diseases and sicknesses, right? When you have the, the, the father lay with his daughter, that, that um, scientifically, that DNA is too close together. You understand what I'm saying? And it causes Down syndrome. It causes different sicknesses, right? Now, I want to show you. Pull up Mongoloid real quick. I think I had some images there. Give me a human race first. So if you notice, the so-called Japanese and the so-called Chinese, Moab and Ammon, they got a different look to themselves. They have a, a Mongoloid look, as they call it, a slant to their eyes. So you got the, the black man. You got the so-called white man. You have Moab or the Asian Right. And then you have the so-called Arab. Now, look at the Asian. Look at his eyes. Now, they weren't always light like this. All right. Before time, in the beginning, we're going to show you some ancient pictures of Moab. They were dark skinned people with woolly hair. They were descendants of Lot. You understand what I'm saying? So what we're looking at right here and Lot was a Hebrew, by the way. So what we're looking at right here. We're looking at these these eyes, the slants of the eye. They call this the human race, but the human race got different phenotypes. OK, go to the next one. Go to the next image. All right, yeah, zoom in on this. You got the so-called Caucasian man. He a brute beast, caveman, dirty, stank, nasty. Oh, you just can't stand him. Anyway, in the middle, <laughs> in the middle, that's supposed to be um, that's supposed to be Gad. But you know, we you know Gad and Judah, we the same, right? But but through the mixing of 
Moab, because we can, we're going to read that later about how um, Gad and Reuben was in the land of Moab. So it's no coincidence that our forefathers mingled with some Moabite women. We can also show you that in Numbers 25. So a lot of times you see a lot of Gadites and a lot of Issacharites and Zebulonites and things of that nature. They got kind of those same kind of slant to their eyes. And you say, well, are they Asian? No, they're not Asian. All right. They just, their, their fathers mixed with Asian women, so-called Asian women. But if you look over to the side, that's that mongoloid look right there. And that comes from the fact that Lot had sex with his two daughters and they brought forth seed. All right. Moab and ben Ami, which is Ammon. Okay. Go to the next image. Mongoloid. Let's look at this up. This is the definition. This is mongoloid. Relating to the broad division of humankind, including the indigenous people of East Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia, Go ahead. and the Arctic region of North America. So that's a lie right there. You see that Arctic region of North America? That's the Bourbon Strait lie that they say Gad and Reuben, the Native American Indians, descend from Asians and they came over on what they called the Bourbon Strait, right? But that ain't happened. Okay? Now, go up. You see what it says? The yes, first sir. one? Yes, sir. Mongoloid. Old-fashioned term for a person with Down syndrome. This first was Down syndrome. Now, if you notice, people with Down syndrome, and we know we got our people. Some of our people have Down syndrome. Some of us have family members that have Down syndrome. So, obviously, we're not making fun of that for those of you that are sensitive. That's not the point of us bringing this up. But we're showing you where these people come from and why they look the way that they look. Now, go to the next image for me real quick. So, you have four different types of what they call uh, Negroid mongoloid, ca caucasoid, and then australoid. And australoid is Japheth, right? They come from Australia. They were known as the, um, the white man called them the Tasmanians or the Tasmanian devil, right? That's where you get that uh, cartoon, like, Looney, what was it, Looney Tunes? I can't remember. Where he spin around, really, he's <laughs> doing all that stuff like that. They try to make it seem like the native people of that land were uh, beasts, Right, they didn't have no intellect, wore loincloths and things like that. But now they had a civilization. So that's what they call Australoid. But we have Negroid, that's us. And then you have Mongoloid. Mongoloid, once again, comes from the father being Lot having sex with his two daughters. So that's the reason Moab looks the way that Moab looks. Okay, so I hope y'all have some understanding when it comes to that. Now, I want you to give me, Jer I just, just popped in my head. Go to Jeremiah 49, verse 1 real quick. I want to show you. Regarding, because you got, like I said, you got some Gadites and some Issacharites and so on and so forth that look Asian. You'd be like, why they look like that? Let me show you this. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 49, and verse 1. Go ahead. Concerning the Ammonites. So we're talking about the Ammonites, right? The sons of uh, Ammon or ben -Ami. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, hath Israel no sons? Mm. Hath he no heir? Go ahead. Why then doth their king inherit God? Why did their king inherit Gad? G-A-D. Gad. I know in your Bible say God. I know. Yes, I used to have that Bible. Go ahead. And his people dwell in his city. And his people dwell in his city. So that's the reason that you see that type of look that slant to those eyes and you automatically equate that with being Asian. No, they're not Asian. For our forefathers mixed with their mothers, and that's where that phenotype come from. Am I right? You've seen that before, right? We've all seen it, okay? So that's not far-fetched. It's not something that's just out of the ordinary. It, it actually happened, okay? So we see it on a daily basis. Now, as it pertains to Moab, I want you to give me the ancient map of Moab. Let's look at ancient map of Moab, because a lot of times you read the Bible and you read about Moab, and we automatically say, yeah, that's talking about the so-called Chinese, which it is. And we're going to show you that today. But a lot of times when the Bible is talking about Moab or the land of Moab, it's talking about the place that we now call Bozra or Jordan, so on and so forth. So I want you to look. So this is an ancient map of Moab. Zoom in for me. So you have Moab and Ammon. Now, on the left side, you had Judah, Phil was Philistia, Israel, all these areas right here. And this was occupied by our forefathers to the left of the Jordan. The Jordan River is right there in the middle, that big, so you see right there in the middle. Now, on the right side of Jordan, you had uh, Reuben. Give me that real quick in the book of um, Numbers 32. I'm going to show you all something real quick. Numbers 32, verse 2 and 3 regarding Reuben and Gad. Watch this. The book of Numbers, chapter 32 and verse 
2. Go ahead. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben. Go ahead. Came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest. And unto the princes of the congregation, saying, mm -hmm. Adaroth and Dibbon. Adaroth and Dibbon. Go ahead. And Jazer uh -huh. and Nimrod and Heshbon and Elalei and Shebam and Nebo and Beon. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Go ahead. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not overjoyed. Go back to that image. So that's why you got to read the Bible, and then you got to pull the map up. With You pull the map up. You got to know what you're reading about. A lot of times we just read and we get bored and we just, oh, yeah, goodbye, Nebo and Dibon. And no, 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 no. Look where that place at so you know hey. what the hell you're talking about. Because I'm tired of these Christians coming up trying to challenge us by our own Bible. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. They come up and challenge us and we don't know. We, oh, uh, oh, uh, I don't know. Right? So you got the Dead Sea down here at the bottom. But above that, you got the River Jordan. On this side, the River Jordan, you had Gad and Reuben. Now, you see where it says Mount Nebo? And below it, you have Moab. And to the right of it, you had Ammon. So Gad and Reuben was always around Moab and Ammon. Message. And mixed amongst them. And that's where that mongoloid look amongst the so-called Native American Indians and the so-called Seminole Indians and the so-called Northern Kingdom. All right? Or oh, that's the hey. so-called the Northern Kingdom and so-called Hispanics and so on and so forth. All right? So we dwelt on that side. Our forefathers dwelt on that side of the River Jordan. Uh, that was a land that was good for cattle. So our forefathers asked Moses, could they occupy that land? And he gave them that land. So yeah, y'all can occupy that, no problem. And that's what we did. Go back to the first map. So I wanted to show you that right below that, you had Moab. So when you're reading about Moab in ancient times, you're reading about them being right above Edom and right below Ammon, okay? Now go to the next uh, map I had. It's a white map. It's got a, uh, yeah, that one right there. Pull that one back up for me. The one you just had. Yep. So you got Ammon. So you see Nebo, Medaba, Dibon, Ur, and Ker. Now, Ur and Ker, I want to deal with that for a minute. So they was dwelling in this land right here, brothers and sisters. I want you to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 15, verse 1. So we're going to do a lot of reading today. So if you don't like to read, this ain't the show for you today. Because we're going to jump into some reading today. But I want to deal with some prophecy regarding Moab. Because you see them there, and then you say, well, how in the hell they get to China? How they get way over there in the east? Hey. I'm going to show you that today. Where's that? The, Isaiah chapter 15 and verse 1. Go ahead. Bring it the out. burden of Moab. Because in the night uh, in the night R of Moab is laid waste and is brought to silence. Mm. Because in the night Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. So the burden of Moab, because in the night R. Now R, we just saw that on um, the map right there. I want you to go to Numbers 21, 15. So R or AR, whatever you want to say. I don't know. Okay. I'm black. Okay. So, but R was in the land of Moab. Okay. Give me that. The book of Numbers, chapter 21 and verse 15. Go ahead. And at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar mm -hmm. and lieth upon the border of Moab. Lie upon the border of Moab. Go ahead. And from thence they went to Beer. That is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, gather the people together and I will give them water. Watch this. Deuteronomy 2, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter Deuteron 2, verse 9. Yep. Deuteronomy 2, verse 9. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, mm -hmm. neither contend with them in battle. For I will not give thee their land for a possession, because I have given R unto the children of Lot. So the Lord said he gave R to the children of Lot. All right, go ahead. For a possession. Mm -hmm. The Emims dwelt therein in time past. The Emims dwelt there in time past. Go ahead. A people great and many and tall as the Anakims. As the Anakims. So these some tall people that was living in there previously. Then the Lord gave that land to Moab. That's what we just saw on the map. Go back to the map real quick. That's what we just saw on the map. The Lord gave that land to them. All right? Skip down to 18. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Thou art to pass over through R, the coast of Moab, this day. 29. Yes, sir. Verse 29, as the children of Esau which dwell in Seir, and the Moabites which dwell in Ar. See that? The Moabites dwelt in Ar. Go ahead. Did unto me until I shall pass over Jordan into the land which the Lord our God giveth us. So watch this. So we're showing you 
through the prophecies that these people are, even through the history, where these people dwelt at. Originally, they dwelt south of Ammon, south of Reuben and Gad in the land of Moab, okay? So Moab was much closer to the land of Israel in that time. So when we're reading about Moab in the scriptures, you got to be able to be able to decipher, okay, is he talking about the people right now? Is he talking about the land right now? Is this future prophecy or has this happened in the past? It's important for us to know this, brothers and sisters. So they dwelt in the land of um, R, right? So go back to Isaiah 15, verse 1 again. Isaiah 15, and verse 1. Go ahead. The burden of Moab, because in the night R of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. Go ahead. Because in the night Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. Go back to the map. So it says in the night Kerr, Kerr, Kerr. So we see that right there where it says Kerr. Now Kerr is the same as Kir Har Ashith, right? Or Ki Har Aseth. You have many different names of that, okay? Go to Ezekiel. 25 verse 9. Yes, sir. Ezekiel 25 verse 9. Matter of fact, before you go there, go to 2 Kings 3. Because we're dealing with care, right? 2 Kings 3 verse 4. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 3 and verse 4. All Bring right, pay out. attention to this. And Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master mm -hmm. and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs and an hundred thousand rams with the wool. Go ahead. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead. So when Ahab died, remember Ahab was the husband to Jezebel. Ahab did much evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord killed Ahab, okay? When Ahab died, though, Misha, the king of Moab, rebelled against the Israelites. Go ahead. But when it came to pass, when Ahab was dead, uh -huh. that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. It's very important that you remember this. So they re he rebelled against the king of Israel. So Israel, Judah, and Edom, I know it sounds crazy, Edom, Moab, <laughs> Edom, Judah and Israel came up against Moab. All right, watch this. Skip down for sake of time. Verse 14. Yes, sir. So they inquired of the prophet because the king of Israel, in his mind, he said, no, the Lord going to deliver us. The, the Lord brought us three together, me, Judah, and Edom together, and the Lord going to destroy us by the hand of Moab. So they were looking for a prophet that would tell them what was going to come to pass. All right, skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, and Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, uh -huh. I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. So I just wanted to let show y'all that scripture to show you that the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom's beef was real. You see what Elisha the prophet just said to Jehoshaphat? He said, look, man, I only want to see your face. That's how sharp the contention was between them. Go ahead. Bruh. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Uh -huh. And he said, thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. He said, make this valley full of ditches. Go ahead. For thus said the Lord, you shall not see... You shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, mm -hmm. that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. Watch this. But, and this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. He will deliver the Moabites into your hand. This is the prophet Elisha letting, the pro letting our forefathers know the Lord is going to destroy Moab and deliver them into your hand. Go ahead. And ye shall smite every French city mm -hmm. and every choice city and shall fail every good tree and stop all wells of water and mar every good piece of, of land with stones. Read. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered that behold, there came water by the way of Edom and the country was filled with water. Go back to uh, that map real quick. Show you what we're looking at. So as there came water by the, zoom out so we can see Edom. There you go. Bring it up. There you go. It said water was going to come by the country or by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. So all of that, from where you're looking at right there, from the direction of Edom, all throughout Kerr was filled with water. Okay, watch this. Keep reading. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. So when they saw the water filling that land, they said, yo, that's blood. Because the sun, I, guess, I don't know, reflected over it, or the, 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 the early morning look of the sun when it first came up. 
what do they call it, sunrise or what a sunrise. When sunrise came up, the way it looked on the water, it looked like everything was blood in front of them. Go ahead. And they said, this is blood. Uh -huh. The kings are surely slain. They thought that Judah, Israel, and Edom got to fighting each other and killed each other. Go ahead. And they have smitten one another. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, Moab to the spoil. He said, now for Moab to the spoil. They done killed each other. Read. And when they came to the camp of Israel, Go ahead. the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites mm -hmm. so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites even in their country. So we went into Kerr, what we were just reading, and we smote the Moabites. Okay? Go ahead. And they beat down the city. And Go ahead. And they beat down the cities, and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone, and filled it, and they stopped all the wells of water, and felled all the good trees, only in Kirhar Kir Aseth. Kirhar Kir Aseth. So Kir that we're looking at on the map, that's Kirhar Aseth. It's just Kir for short. All right? Go ahead. Left they the stones thereof. Uh -huh. How be it? The slingers went about it and smote it. Go ahead. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him. When he saw he didn't want no smoke. That's what that mean. He started two battles. The battle too sore. He said, I ain't messing with them folk. Go ahead. He took with them 700 men mm -hmm. that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom. But they could not. They thought they was going to run through Edom and Edom was ready for war too. Go ahead. Then he took his eldest son that should have rain in his stead and offer him for a burnt offering upon the wall. Then he took his oldest son that was supposed to reign in his stead and he offered him. These people, they, I know y'all be thinking Moab is just all oh, they ain't no, no, these folks is wicked. They always been wicked. This man sacrificed his own son. Go ahead. And there was great indignation against Israel. Go ahead. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. Now when it says there was great indignation against Israel, they hated us because of this. I want to show you because a lot of y'all don't think that the Moabites got hatred. I'm going to show you today. We got videos, clips. All. I'm going to show you. Moab always hated Judah. Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, they hate us. They've always hated us. <laughs> you understand? Got it. Black woman went up in there. Oh, they got all cool. It. They gave us 5% <laughs> off of Brazilian wavy. And a, a cap. What they call that cap they put on their head? A front. What they call it? What they call that damn thing they put on their head? Lace front, whatever it is. Yeah, they, yeah, where they sew through their own damn scalp. Crazy as hell, man. You already got that beautiful hair. Wow. You're going to sew through your own scalp to put their hair in your head. You crazy. Don't get me started, man. This ain't about black women today. I love y'all sisters, man. All right, so, <laughs> so I wanted to show you when, it, when we go back to Isaiah 15, verse 1, I'm trying to give you the, the distinction. Go ahead. Isaiah 15, verse 1, the burden of Moab. Because in the night... Ar of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence mm -hmm. because in the night Kerr of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. They were brought to silence when our forefathers linked up Israel, Judah, and we linked up with Edom and we destroyed them. The Israelites destroyed the Moabites. The Moabites had an enragement of hatred because of that thing, because of what we had done to them in times past. When you read the scriptures, you realize we was kicking everybody's behind. You understand? And they hated us. The Canaanites, the Philistines, they hated us because we run up in your land and whoop them. And they held that indignation and hatred waiting for our fall. And when we fail, that's why they punished us the way that they have punished us. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Roll. 